Well, we're ready to get started. And again, welcome to our TCI talk for November. I can't even believe it's November. On the pandemic pivot, how to survive and thrive during COVID. And I'm really excited to, um, and thank you, Fran, for putting this together. Fran is going to introduce herself and our wonderful panelists, um, Krista Waterworth Alterman, Amy Angelo, and Heather Lowenthal. So, Fran, I'm turning it over to you. Very much, Lori. Uh, welcome to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it, and uh, only only wish we all could have a little Oceana coffee right now. Uh, I'm I'm not even a coffee drinker, but I can, I can use a little jolt. Um, so. <laughs> So, but we're really, we're excited to have you all here and to have a lively discussion of female business owners about uh, what happened when, when their and our companies uh, went into survival mode during the pandemic. We're gonna share some stories and we're gonna discuss the changes that we all made that will inform how we run a business going forward. We'll discuss what we learned. Hopefully that some of you can apply to your own business. And we're also gonna hopefully provide some tips on how not only to survive, but to thrive in a world of uncertainty. So again, my name is Fran Sachs. I'm COO of Crystal Home. Um, we are an, an interior design firm based in Palm Beach County. We work all throughout Palm Beach County. Uh, I am also a TCI member and also a member of the TCI Forum in West Palm Beach. So if anybody uh, on on the Zoom has any questions or anything, I'm happy to you know, have a sidebar at some point and, and talk about TCI and, and the benefits uh, there. Um, our panelists we have today, um, first is Krista Waterworth Alterman, and she's the creative director and founder of Crystal Home. Krista is an award-winning interior designer. Her, she has a modern, clean, uh, and classic aesthetic, and it's earned her a reputation as Palm Beach County's go-to interior designer. Krista received her Master of Fine Arts from the New School in Manhattan, and she furthered her studies at Parsons Schools of Interior Design. Chris is also a television personality, and she's known for her highly acclaimed HGTV shows, Save My Bath and Splurge and Save. She's also been featured on the Food Network's Restaurant Impossible and DIY's The Vanilla Ice Project for Nine Season. And uh, also we were just delighted that uh, Chris was designated uh, as a 2020 TCI Florida Top Women in Business. And uh, we were awesome. bummed you didn't get to go there in person, but uh, the rate that we're going this year, we should make it for next year. So we'll get to celebrate next year. Um, next up, we're going to have Amy Angelo, um, who is actually one of my fellow forum members. Am I allowed to disclose that? Right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> whoops, whoops. Um, Top secret. <laughs> next. Um, so I've known Amy for a while, and I'm a big fan. Um, and she's president and COO, CEO of Oceana Coffee. Amy's a graduate of the University of Florida and has roots in Palm Beach County since 1994. Oceana Coffee was founded in 2009 by Amy and her husband, Scott. What began as a passionate hobby in the garage to fulfill purely selfish needs for some good coffee has grown into a successful multi-location business consisting of several affiliated businesses and a strong, compassionate connection to the community. Oceana produces coffee for online, wholesale, retail, white label, and grocery. They have an emphasis on sourcing only the finest coffees available that also carry organic, fair, fair trade, and Rainforest Alliance certification. Oceana Coffee provides training and consulting on all aspects of coffee service and business, and is also Palm Beach County's first and only award-winning coffee roaster. And lastly, a certified women-owned business in Palm Beach County. And then we have, Heather, excuse me, Heather Lowenthal, who's the owner of Posh Parties. Um, I've only recently met Heather, but already a big fan. Uh, Heather got her start in 2003 when she launched Posh Paper, a high-end custom invitation and stationery business. Her creativity, style, and attention to detail was such a success that it paved the way for the launch of Posh Parties in 2006. Heather has always had a knack for keeping up with the latest lifestyle trends knows how to make a party a one-of-a-kind experience, and she brings that along with her expertise and unique vision to each event. She has extensive experience working with many of South Florida's most exclusive locations, including the Breakers, the Flyler Museum, O Palm Beach, Viscaya, and private homes and clubs in Palm Beach and Jupiter Island. She has planned events for celebrities, professional athletes, national corporations, and charities. So with those introductions, I am gonna uh, turn it over to the panel and I'm going to ask my first question. 
and I'm just to start, I'm just going to throw it out, whoever wants to speak, and then um, I'm going to just sort of keep an eye on the time, and depending on how that's going, I might suggest that we move along. So the first question is, looking back to March of this year, could you tell us a little bit about what happened when you realized that the pandemic would affect your business? And how did you solve the problem of being faced, which is complete unknown? Can I go first? Yes, go ahead. Um, first of all, I want to say I'm honored to be on this panel with Heather and Amy. I'm really excited and thank you, TCI. Like, I love these events. It's amazing to be able to get together even virtually. Um, and I think that the two things that looking back on March and sort of how we solved the problem of being faced with the unknown, which the unknown really is about what happens is when people are don't know what's about to happen. A lot of fear, a lot of anxiety sort of is is what drives us. And what's more important than anything else during times like that is over communication and I think having a solution. And that was something that we really, from the get go, those were two things that were very important to us. We just over communicated, reached out to all of our reps, our vendors, our clients, um, we were empathetic and, you know, really related to everybody because we were all in the same, you know, position. Um, and we really tried to provide solutions as quickly as we possibly could. Um, and I think more importantly than that, you know, there was a strategy that we had to implement that was unfortunate. And that was letting, uh, laying off some people in our company which you know was really a difficult decision to make but an important decision strategically in order to really thrive or at least start to figure out how we're going to make our way out of these these sort of unforeseen circumstances um and i think so i think thankfully the business has started to pick back up and we're rebuilding our team and we've also learned how to better communicate overall and how to be really solution oriented, no matter what sort of comes toward us from a business perspective. Yeah, actually something you said just made me realize some of the things we did in the beginning, it seems so long ago um, and it definitely was a big surprise, um, you know, that we would have to limit our contact with customers. Um, and, you know, coffee is considered as an essential business. We actually manufacture a product that people need. You know, I like to think it's as important as toilet paper. So, and I think for a lot of people, it is as important as toilet paper. Um, so we were fortunate, we didn't have to, we didn't have to close our doors. We could still do takeout, um, but a large part of our business is wholesale and we do support hotels, restaurants, other coffee shops. Um, so, you know, the restaurant industry has really been hit very hard by this. And I think one of the first things we did was really reach out to support our customers, you know, our wholesale customers. And we did listings of who's open, who's doing takeout, who's doing delivery. Um, and it, you know, someone said something about communication and Immediately when we went into lockdown, we started doing a daily live Facebook coffee talk. So this was something that terrified me in the beginning. I hated being live. Um, it was just very, very scary. I remember the first one we did was demonstrating to people how to come into our shop during this time. You know, you're wearing a mask, you're washing your hands. Here's some wipes to open the door with. So. That was the first one. And from there, we did something every day to connect with our customers, but also our wholesale customers. So I didn't realize until this conversation, actually, how how big of a, a solution that, you know, that glue to everything that we need to get things done is communication. Absolutely. When I think of March, I mean, we had weddings that we planned for a year that were, you know, about to take place that we were in like survive, you know, that um, survival of the fittest fight or flight. Like we were like, 
oh my gosh, what do we do? We can't have these gatherings. I mean, we had one a week after. It was no, it was March 21st. It was like the first one we had to postpone. And we were kind of had to change our wedding hat to therapist hat, you know, for all of these couples that were freaking out, you know, about this. They couldn't even imagine like, how could my wedding be canceled or postponed? And it was like, we had to live in the moment and stay positive and change. We were like, again, on the go, just doing everything we could, you know, finding new dates for people. I mean, I was extremely optimistic at the beginning, like this is a short period of time, we're gonna be fine in the fall, like don't worry, we're gonna move your, you know, everybody thought that. So we pushed weddings, probably half a dozen weddings, um, you know, to the fall and those ended up having to get moved again. So we really had to, we were in such like a, you know, a, a figure it out, spur of the moment type of mode that once we, you know, went through all the therapy sessions with our clients and found new wedding dates for them and um, kind of moved with the times, we were able to get a little bit of a breather and say like, okay, you know, now how are we gonna move forward with our business? But it was definitely um, like a chat, it was a challenge and at the time you don't even realize what you're doing. I didn't. You know, I was doing this all. I wasn't charging extra. I was like, I want to do anything to help these people. I feel so bad for them. And, you know, we just did whatever it took to help um, hold their hands through something that seemed like it was the end of the world. I mean, obviously, we know there's in the big picture, it's, you know, it's the wedding and there's many other things to look forward to in life. But yes, it was a really big deal to them. And we just had to, um, like in the moment we were busier than ever, just trying to scramble and, and, and then at the same time stay positive and let them know like, we're gonna get through this together and it's all gonna be great. And you're gonna get to have your wedding. So it was kind of just strange, but it all worked out. And we're getting more inquiries than ever right now for people who, and weddings, people wanna get married. So um, it's not like a product, you know, it's, it's a life, experience that people are going to do and I think at the beginning everyone panicked and now people are realizing like if I still want to have my wedding and I want to get married I'm gonna wear you know it's okay if less people show up or if I have a smaller more intimate wedding you know I think that it's becoming more meaningful about what it's all about versus you know a whole production yeah I like what you said about you know being a therapist because I think that 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 was such a huge part of managing everything in the beginning was really trying to be um, empathetic to people and give them a solution where they felt like, okay, there's something we can actually do about this. Um, even if we're taking it day by day, week by week, we don't really know what to expect. You know, it's kind of like when a plane is going through a lot of turbulence, the last thing you want is for the pilot to get on and say, I don't really know what to do. You know, the plane is, we have a lot of turbulence. You know, instead you want your, your pilot to get on and kind of tell you, all right, here's our plan. You know, we're, we're turbulence is happening because of this reason and this is our solution. We're gonna land in Tupelo or whatever, you know, and mm -hmm. having a plan and being able to talk through all of those sort of emotional issues that people were having at the time. And we were too was really something that helped everybody all around from a professional and personal perspective. For well, sure. and they obviously they're hiring you for a reason and they're looking at you as an expert and you know, they don't know who to turn to and it's an, you know, even designing a home or whatever the case is, it's still, it's an emotional thing. So you're a neutral person who can be the calm factor saying like, I've got control of this. I know what we're going to do. And I think when people realize, you know, a lot of times I had to say, you know, we're all in this together. It's not like a one-off situation where maybe there was a hurricane that came and canceled your wedding and oh poor you like that stinks that happened to just you but this was like every bride in america or around the world you know had to be in the same position where they're doing this so i think that they felt like a sense of community like okay i'm not i'm not alone going through this but 
you know, but it is true, like we're their advocates, you know, we have to stick up for them for, you know, with the vendors and be the middle person. And mm -hmm. I think it took, you were taking a lot extra on, you know, as business owners, you know, cause we want to do the right thing and we want everything to be a certain way, you know, a certain caliber. And, and I just kept telling myself, you know, I talked to so many other people in my industry, other wedding planners around the country. What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, some people were like, well, I'm going to charge an extra $5,000, you know, just to make all these changes. And I sat back and said, nope, you know what? In the end, they're going to say, thank goodness that Posh Parties was with us this whole way. They, I couldn't have done it without them. They got us through. Like to me, it was more about the way we would be perceived in a crisis situation versus, you know, um, it's all about me and now I'm going to lose money and it's all about my business, you know? So I took a different approach, I think, than some other people I was hearing about in my industry. Heather, that's a, that gives us a great segue to our next question, which is going to be about financial issues. So before we do that, just to get the group back involved, we'd like to do a poll about any resources that you might have had to tap to help finance yourself during this downturn. Um, and I think Lori can launch that poll. Um, and there you go. Um, so any, you can pick any, any and all. Um, and I'll, I'll answer for us. Um, and then, so the question, so while folks are answering that, the question for the group, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Amy and be quiet for a little bit. Um, we'll start with you. And were you prepared for a financial shift in your business? Um, and so that's the first part of the question. Um, and then what's gonna, what will follow on, and you don't necessarily have to answer both now, but I'm just gonna present it and then we can figure out the best way to answer. But then what steps are you taking now to make sure that you're okay going forward financially? Um, I think, you know, were we prepared? I think we were the best prepared that we could have been. Um, you know, I don't know that anyone's ever really prepared to land in Tupelo, you know. <laughs> so are we still in Tupelo? We might be in Tupelo still. Um, so I think one of the biggest things that helped us is really knowing our numbers, you know, knowing what our break even was every day, because we do have a business where, you know, it's open seven days a week. I do have a team of people that come to work every day. So just knowing knowing those numbers and knowing what your break even is every day, really having control over, you know, your team, how many hours we're working, where we need to shift, where we need to put people. Um, we were fortunate with the PPP funding, we didn't have to lay anyone off. Um, so that was that was great. Um, I really struggled with paying people not to do anything though. So we still did have them, if they were at home, they were doing things to support the business from home. So we did find some new skill sets and we did give some people some new things to do, which was great. Um, but I think knowing those numbers and knowing, you know, you have to, I mean, I wouldn't say we're on edge all the time, but we're, you just have to watch it all the time. You don't want it sliding the other way or just, you know, you gotta keep control of all of the expenses. The thing that we are really pushing for now, you know, we are looking at more grocery accounts and looking at, you know, obviously online has been much more important to us during this time. So we are looking for more ways to become more virtual um, some better than drive through kind of concepts, but also, you know, just really putting some things in place that we can be stronger and more secure going forward using the internet and using larger grocery chains. Um, because the restaurants and hotels and those places, you know, they're definitely a less capacity than they were. So. Um, I, I'll go next. I mean, I think having a smart business partner and COO like like Fran is actually key to the survival of any small business. You know, what she taught me really was, 
And I think what all the experts say is you kind of have to be prepared for winter, right? Because your business will go through all kinds of seasons. Um, it's hard to, to, um, to, it's hard to expect a pandemic or something, you know, of this size, but, you know, economic downturns and all of that, that's something you, if you're smart, you kind of have to prepare for that um, as a business owner. And that's something that Fran really taught me. You know, good times are going to come, so just like spring is going to come, right? The flowers are going to, are going to grow again at some point. Um, and I think a big part of that too, is just having a little bit of runway, um, which is hard to do when you, when you, have a small business runway as in like having a, a cash reserve for you know when when things like this happen or just to be ready for um you know just slow times and and all of that in financially but um so we we really we did have a, a small reserve which was i think it's a smart thing to do it's something that we're we're going to continue doing moving forward. We we applied for and received both the PPP loan and the initial EIDL grant, which is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Um, and we also took out a small SBA loan to that had really amazing terms, like favorable terms. And we really just, you know, constantly monitoring our financial um, situation and our cash cash position is something that you know I think it's just so important to have um, a growing business and to keep growing and to to be able to um, slowly start to add reserves though back up build them up as we get busier um, and to be ready for that snapback because you know it's gonna happen it is starting to happen in our industry we're definitely getting you know, more calls for potential clients than we have in quite some time. And so it's, it is, it's really exciting. And I'm, I'm happy that we're in a, a more positive place at the moment. Um, it feels good. I agree. First, I want to say I need a Fran in my life. <laughs> it would be awesome if I had that. Um, I but no, I agree. I had luckily had a savings, you know, in my business that I've been, you know, and I um, kind of had to change my mindset because, you know, you could go down a rabbit hole like, oh my gosh, you know, I was counting on these payments and now these weddings aren't happening. So a lot of them got deferred to next year. So you have, to, you know, so I was planning in my head, I just changed my mindset. Like I'm not getting it now, but it's gonna come. Luckily I have, you know, like I said, my reserves, which, um, you know, I just always like to have a cushion. I'm a one person business for the, for the most part. Um, I mean, I have my team, but it's, I don't have a big staff and I don't have a COO and I don't have, you know, so it's kind of just me making it happen every, every day, every month. But, um, I have a supportive husband, which helps, you know, so I know that he'll never let me go down if anything bad happened. But yeah, so I was also able to keep my two girls that are on my payroll. Um, and I was happy about that because I kept thinking it's not their fault, you know, that this is all happening. And I'm lucky that I'm in a position that I could, you know, do that. And I know that I'm going to need them more than ever when things do pick up and when the flowers do grow and we've got, you know, we're back on it. and. To be honest, we've honest be, been busy this entire time, even though, um, like what Amy said, like we found new things to do. Like I looked internally and said, I've never had a, I had a downtime where I could actually do something for my own business. And I redid my website and I put actually money into it. So I spent money during the, you know, even though I wasn't bringing in money, I actually took money that I had saved and put it into my business during a time where I would never have the hours or the time of day to, to sit down and like figure out like how do I make my own business better because I'm just always helping other people. So in a way it was a, like financially, even though I had to put money out and I still kept paying my people, I just knew the reward in the end would be better, would be great. So. Great. Um, Lori, do you want to share the results of the poll? There we go. Um, oh, so okay. So about half of us got the PPP loan more than half use personal finances uh, a few of us had some reserves and then a little bit of credit card hopefully you're able to start paying those down um, little bank 
So that's that's good. I mean, that you know, it's important that we realize the resources. And, and I'll actually give a shout out to my TCI forum. You know, we really supported each other in figuring out because the PPP, if anyone did, you know, for the half of us that applied for it, it was a nightmare. It was so confusing and, and very, uh, very stress inducing. And so, um, you know, I, I feel that I really benefited by having my forum members, um, because we had an, an accountant there, we had a, an attorney there, we had small business, big business. So we were able to really support each other in um, figuring out how to, how to get that to happen. So, uh, so that's great. Um, we want to do something a little fun before we move on to our next question. Um, each of our panelists uh, has been kind enough to give a little gift. So we're going to raffle off our first gift, which is from Oceana Coffee. They are going to give a $50 gift card that you can use online. Um, so even the folks that, that are out of the area um, for the further south, if you want, um, <laughs> you can do that. Um, and even if you don't get the gift card, go to Oceana Coffee online and order something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, if you're, and if you're local, you, do you still deliver, Amy? I know that my we husband's do. gotten some. Yeah, so they yeah. actually deliver to your home. So I know that my husband has gotten uh, several deliveries. And in, in the deepest of like March and April, when everyone was so sad, it was really nice to get. Um, so um, the winner, the winner, let's pick a winner. Where are we? Is going to be Maureen Shea. Um, yay, Maureen! So um, we have your email address, Maureen. So, um, and Amy, I think, can we email it to her? Do we have to send it to her? Yeah, no, we can email it. Okay, so we'll email you the, the card and, and you get a $50 gift card at Oceana. So, yay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, and then on to, we're gonna ask, we're gonna do one more poll and then we're gonna go on to another question. So this is kind of the sad poll. Um, did anybody have to lay off any employees? Is that coming popping up? There we go. And that is going to be our next question. Um, not necessarily about layoffs, but um, so to the group, how did you manage your team? And, and did you have to do anything differently? Heather. Okay. I mentioned this briefly before, but luckily I was able to keep my team. Um, but we kind of came up with new, first of all, we were very busy at the beginning, still moving weddings and it was like a normal work day. It wasn't anything different. Um, but then when we got into the, you know, like downtime, I guess, if you want to call it over the summer, we, I just kind of gave them new roles or came up with new things to do. So we were always staying busy, like again, going back to more internal things, updating our holiday card list. I mean, like thinking of things that it's like, we never ever have time to do. So we were constantly doing them, even trying to get ahead of the game on, on you know, events that were taking place in the future, anything that we could do to just stay on top of it. So that I knew that there was gonna come a period where it was just gonna be like, here we go, we're in it. And you know, just in a blink and you don't have time to think again. So we just tried to get ahead of the game and I just tried to reimagine ways that we could all still work together so that, you know, they could stay on board. How about you, Crystal? So we did let go of, of half of our staff. Um, and I think that um, we learned a lot from that from from that um, unfortunate decision. But what what we did with our our staff that we kept was we we really decided that it was important to not only connect with each other but communicate and really offer a super positive attitude about everything that we possibly could. Still empathetic, still you know understanding each other's situation, but. And the way we did that, the way we connected and communicated was we did regular virtual Zoom meetings. I'm one of someone in our breakout room was saying she's so Zoomed out and, you know, <laughs> it's a lot of Zooming. It's a Zoom life. I wish I bought stock in Zoom. Um, but, you know, we also implemented new technology, which was really great. We started using Slack 
for online chatting and for project management. And that was really, um, that was really amazing to have the time to be able to implement that. Um, we were very transparent um, about and reassured people um, about their job security. And we, we let team members know early on, I think that, you know, their duties are gonna change. We're in emergency mode to a degree and we sort of all have to pitch in a little bit differently than what we're used to. And at some point, you know, with having so much on your plate, more on your plate than usual, you know, there, we wanted to make sure that we were there for everybody to be able to talk and sort of guide them and really show leadership. You know, these are the times, right, when you want great leaders in your life um, to really help guide, guide the ship in the night, you know, because that's that's more important than anything else. People want to feel that they can trust you, they can rely on you. And so that was that was more important than, than anything else. And we did that really honestly through a lot of communication, just talking, being aware of each other's um, circumstances and being as positive as we possibly could during such, you know, unforeseen circumstances. Yep. Um, so in the beginning, I mean, we, and as I said before, I kind of answered this before, but we, we didn't have to lay anyone off. We did. I can remember back to when this initially started, you know, we did, we were still meeting in person. You know, we were meeting about every week, which is very unusual for us. We normally only meet, you know, once a month, once every two months with the whole team, but we really, you know, I can remember several gatherings where we all got together and talked about what was going on. You know, is everyone healthy? How's your family? You know, how are we all going to deal with this? Because not just, it's not just about us and our business, but I have people who have children at home. They can't, you know, the kids are home from school now. It's a very different kind of working environment. Um, so just having those conversations from the beginning, discussing as a team, you know, how we're going to deal with it, new cleaning protocols. You know, there's a lot of things that we had to put in place and furniture to move and just new processes, how to deal with a customer. You know, the whole interaction is different. Um, you know, really a completely different focus on customer service now. You know, half of your face is covered up and it's hard to communicate. So, you know, really putting a focus on how you, how you greet people, how you, how you talk, so not just with the customers, but with each other. And during a lot of the time when things were really shut down, we would only have one person on staff, you know, in the shop. So they were taking takeout orders, drinks and food were being put outside for people to pick up. Um, so it was a very different way of doing things. Um, so people having to be on shift just by themselves with the occasional customer. Uh, there was a lot of book reading going on. So I think I think some of the people that we had working from home, I may have actually gotten more out of them um, with some marketing and some social media, some writing tasks that I gave them. So we definitely shifted some job roles. Uh, the people that were coming in to work, we were able to pay them time and a half, um, which was something that they all wanted to see that continue on forever. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we had to use that money in a certain amount of time. So that was, that was it. Um, so yeah, definitely a different way of doing things, but we didn't lose anyone. We had a couple people say, you know, I'm not, I don't have time. I just have to focus on my kids. So we didn't have to let anyone go. Um, people's roles definitely did change. And I think we have a stronger team because of it. Yeah, I think it's interesting to sort of hear the perspective of, of you guys in, in, you know, such varying businesses, right? Um, we certainly had a difficult time, you know, making the decisions to lay people off. And, and I think in the end, um, it made us really reevaluate how our roles, you know, as and what we bring to the company and we're able to almost like 
course correct in a way that we can people can really focus on it's clearer what everybody's really good at um and i think that that's kind of an exciting shift in and to be able to rebuild and to rebuild our team now that's what we're doing we're starting to hire again is is really exciting and you know when you're in the business of home it's like people are home you would think everybody wants their homes to be more beautiful but at the same time they don't want anyone coming to their home they don't want you know they don't want delivery people they don't want installation crews they don't want me coming or my staff coming to their home so everybody was working all my staff has, has been working from their homes and that and the shift and the clarity that came from that was really phenomenal well we were talking about this in the breakout session at the beginning we've all said that it's been more productive being at home um so there is positive that's coming out of this i think and like you said um seeing getting more clarity on each employee's responsibilities and their strengths and what they're good at and what they want to focus on and being able to enhance that and and also you know having that productivity where you're not as crazed and you can be more productive from home i think has been a plus yeah totally i mm -hmm. agree lori do we have our poll results Wow. Okay. So that half and half. So it's um, it was it was a tough a tough few months for everybody. I, I know that um, you know as Krista mentioned, we can report that um, we are starting to hire now. Um, so hopefully some of the folks that did have to lay off are are soon in a position where they can bring people back as well. Um, so that's that's interesting. Um, so let's move to something also more fun. Um, we're doing another raffle. Uh, in this instance, um, Heather from Posh Parties is giving away 50 personalized cocktail napkins and that uh, she has, she will design herself. So let's see who the winner is. Um, it is Susan Snyder. Is Susan still here? Is she on the next? Hi, thank you. Yes. Yay. Okay, so same thing. We have your email address and uh, we'll, we'll connect you up and get those out to you. Thank you. Figure out what you want. Okay. Um, next question. Let's talk marketing. What did you do? How did you, did you have to change your marketing message? Um, how did you communicate to your audience? Was it different? Was it the same? Heather's so eager to talk. Go. This is my, this is my excitement. This is what I was the proudest I think about during this whole time. Um, like I said, I super big on social media. That's how a lot of people find out about me. Um, I thought I was doing it great myself, but um, when I had the time to look into my own business during this time, I was able to kind of up my game, I would say a little bit more on social media. I do work with a PR company that I've had for 10 years, but they um, you know, helped me with my stories and how to make it better. And I think that it was hard because, you know, I kept wanting to put, you know, I, you need to be relevant and you need to stay um, with the times and you don't want to be ostentatious showing a 300 person wedding when people's weddings are being canceled, you know, or you can only have a wedding with 10 people. So trying to like change my message to be coinciding with the times. I've gotten huge response from, from so many people um, just being active on social media like every single day and posting stories and being real and talking to the audience. And I think that because I had this time to like focus on my own internal business, it's actually like our marketing has gotten better I was even able to update, you know, our brochure and like I said before, my website. So I just think that um, like changing with the times, but also staying relevant and staying like I didn't, I'm in the, I feel like I'm in a business where it's like, if you're not seen, you don't, people don't uh, think about you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like you have to be in front of people all the time. So like you're the first person they think of when they're having a Palm Beach wedding. So 
how did I, I didn't want to lose six months of my life of my, you know, of this whole business I built. I, again, could have gone down this whole sad rabbit hole of like my whole business is crashing in front of me. But instead I rose to the occasion and I just made sure that I was going to be seen as an expert. Again, the therapist, like I'm here for you. I just changed my whole plan. And because of that, I think now I'm seeing more and more like People are inquiring. People are messaging me on social media. People are thanking me for, you know, advice. So I think that um, I just changed my message to go along with what's relevant today. And I think that staying in front of people every day and just being a, a face and a and making yourself be an expert in your field, you are going to be the one that people are going to go to and like rely on. So that was important to me. Yeah, I totally agree. I, um, I'm sorry, Amy, do you want to go? No, you can go if you want. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, listen, it's another, it was another um, great lesson for me in having amazing core um, group of experts on my team. I have a phenomenal marketing director, Jen, who just, is a social media expert and you know the first thing she said to us when this happened was you have to engage with the current conversation and what is the reality now you know you don't want to be tone deaf like heather was saying and like put all these pictures of people in crowds and people with their arms around each other and all of that in your marketing message and really what our um what our message changed to, we sort of pivoted to your home is your sanctuary, you know, invest in your nest kind of language. Um, we know things are tough out there, um, but you know, your home is, is, you know, your safe place. Let us help you create that beauty and that vision with you. Um, we, we did that through social media. We did that through Facebook ads. Um, videos are really sticky. People really like to sit and watch videos, you know, they'll watch a video longer than they'll look at a photo. So we definitely did. I was the only one in the office doing design work. And so I did videos of um, sort of behind the scenes that I think people really responded to. Um, and that message of we're, we're in this together, you know, here's what we're doing. We're here for you kind of of marketing really helped to sort of get people engaged. And I think it it was an opportunity for us to even um, get some new followers and focus a little bit more like Heather was saying on things that you normally don't have time to focus on. And and so that was that was really a positive um, a positive way to kind of message people and to get our brand out there. I know, sorry, Amy, I just want to say one more thing. I just know I, at the beginning, was every day like, I miss weddings. Oh, we miss being together. Oh, I'm so sad. Like, I can't wait till the day we, you know, and it was just constant. And one day I was like, if I put up one more post about I miss this, I miss that, I said, no way. I'm like, we're going to change how we're thinking around here, you know, and, and made it more of like advice and things to look forward to. And, you know, we do have some smaller, more relevant weddings that we could post now, you know, so we're putting the 10 person dinner party, you know, up or things that are more relevant to today. But I was like, I am so sick. If I have to go on one more video and be like, I feel terrible. I'm in this with you. We got this, you know, I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to say like, let's, let's keep focusing on the future. Let's look at the positive. So I definitely was like going down the like, one little part and one day a light bulb went off and I was like, no, we have to be the advocates for the future of how this is going to all come together and be amazing. So I just wanted to put that little tidbit in there. And that's so true. And that's, you know, when we started, I started doing those live Facebook, you know, a lot of it, I think if I went back and looked at them, there's probably all these stages of, you know, COVID, you know, first you're shocked and then you're like, I can't believe this is happening. And you're, you know, you, you keep talking about it. And I think for us, it was really about connecting over coffee. You know, even though we're at home, we can still connect over a coffee. We're on Zoom, you know, with my local chamber, we're sending out Oceana coffee to the people who are joining the Zoom meeting. 
which I'm sorry, I didn't do it for this. That would have been a really great thing <laughs> to connect over coffee. So I apologize. Um, but that's, you definitely have to change your message. You know, we kept it very positive. We stayed more than 10,000 miles away from anything political. Um, you know, just really being more of a support. You know, we're all going through this together. Our kids are home. It's crazy. What the hell are we doing? Um, you, but having that honest conversation as if I was talking to somebody over a coffee in our shop. Um, also, we got my husband involved in this. Um, he is Australian and people love to hear him talk. And <laughs> he is a coffee expert. You know? I love that. He is, he's a Q grader, he's handsome, he's my Aussie Pierce Brosnan, I call him. Um, and he's, you know, he's really good on the camera. We've been trying for 10 years to get him to do videos. And now it was the perfect, you know, when this first happened, we all kind of took a deep breath and we're like, we have to do something like we have to make a change we have to do it now like just kick it into gear and let's do it so in the during the times when everything was shut he was doing two lives actually three he was up saturday morning and sunday morning 11 o'clock teaching people how to make coffee at home teaching them about roasting teaching them about you know where coffee comes from what is it all about um and definitely some of it, you know, there was that whipped coffee craze that happened in the beginning of the pandemic. So we tried to do that in our kitchen. We broke some glasses. It was, it was fantastic, you know, but it was real and it's entertaining. But that shift to making coffee at home is a very real thing. Um, we do sell coffee equipment. We are actually working with one of the largest um, home coffee machine manufacturers, Mr. Coffee. Um, so we're actually starting some video series with them. So I think some of the things you're doing, you don't realize what the impact is going to be later. You know, so these, we feel silly doing it. And, you know, you question yourself, am I damaging my brand by being so personal and being, you know, so real with people? I think it's going to work out for us in amazing ways. And I think, you know, be real with people be connected with them. Um, so I think that's that's been something, even though you're terrified of doing it, you know, put yourself out there and, and see what happens, so. I think you're right. I think people really want, want to, want real. They want to know, they want to know that like, we're doing, you know, things on, on, on our phone cameras now, you know, we're shooting pictures, we're putting up, you know photos that we normally wouldn't you know prior and it's really all about shifting even though your brand means one thing it's about elevating yourself to the conversation that everyone's having and i think they want that realness they crave it you know um so i think that as i've watched some of your husband do some of those videos i think he's awesome thank you <laughs> well and it's in the beginning he would get a little disheartened because he thought people weren't interacting you know we'd get in the beginning we had a lot of people interacting and then as things lightened up people are getting out back to their normal routine but I think you know even if they're not interacting in that moment they're going to see it later and that brand recognition of you know always being there and you know you can go back and look at how to make a French press with Scotty um, you know that's that's been important and I do agree about like keeping it real and being being yourself and being real. Like I used to hate doing the videos on, on Instagram. I made myself do it, but I would only do it on a day that I could blow dry my hair and have my makeup on. And you know, it had to be a certain element because if you ever see me out and about, like usually I'm dressed and, you know, out for my day, I have my image and you know, that's myself, it's not fake, but it's just how I always was. But I'm like, you know what though? Like I'm in my workout clothes. I'm gonna go on and just be like, I can still plan your wedding, but I'm just wearing workout clothes today. <laughs> or I didn't put my makeup on, but here's me and I'm here for you and whatever it is. And I've gotten a, so much more response from that because it is, it's like they wanna see you, it's true. Or I've been on Zoom calls with clients and when my kids were home doing school, like they'd pop their head in and wave and it's like, Normally I'd be mortified. Oh my gosh, my kid went into my video. But you know what? Like we're all home with our kids right now and it's actually they they don't mind saying it. 
or the puppy runs in and I show the, you know, that's not something I would like in my old life, I'm calling it my old life before <laughs> you have to change how, you know, the world is today. But I would never even think to do things like that. But now it's like, that's just part of who this, is, like this is. And I think people like seeing like you're a normal, real person. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, um, it's actually um, a positive. I'm watching the clock and we're, we're, we're getting close to the end. So I want to do a couple more things. We're going to have one last quick sort of speed round question before we end. So the, the last the last couple of things, one more fun, we're going to do one more raffle. Um, we're going to give a one hour um, virtual design session with Krista where you can consult. You have one hour, so ask whatever you want. Um, and it's, um, let's see, who is, let me see. And the winner is Linda. <laughs> Yay, Linda. So Linda, also we have your email address, so we'll send you out an email and we'll, we'll set that up. So, yay. Fantastic, okay. and boy, do I need that. Thank you. <laughs> yay, Great. Linda. I'm excited. I, I love coffee, but I need this more. <laughs> <laughs> you can have both. <laughs> yes. Right. You're right. I'm, I'm going to log on and order some. <laughs> Excellent. So we're going to do one last poll and one last question. So what are your projections for the coming year? How do you think your business is going to do? So Lori's going to put that up. And then we're going to move on to our last question. We only have literally a few minutes. So this is going to be just lightning round. So I'm going to ask for one change that you have made as a result of the pandemic that you're going to carry on going forward that you think is going to help your business generally overall. For me, I can, I can go with that one. Yep. Um, definitely more of a focus on the online aspect of our business. And we've been, I've had more time to put more effort into the blog writing and the newsletters that go out. So that is something that I definitely, you know, our meetings now, I when I sit with our team and we talk about marketing, the whole thing is marketing equals money. If we're marketing, we're bringing in money. And it's amazing those, if I miss a newsletter or I decide I don't wanna do it that week, it shows in our sales on the online sales. So that is something that I've learned very clearly during this time, I'm going to keep it going and keep enhancing that and turn it into a job for someone. A wonderful job that I don't have to do anymore. <laughs> oh, I love that. It's always nice to, to have those jobs you don't have to do anymore, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And sometimes you have to take them back, but you I know. know. And I, I think that that was something that happened for me, like I really, I was working like constantly. I overworked myself. And and I think what I learned and the one thing that I'm gonna use moving forward is not only asking for help um, and not micromanaging, but being able to take advantage of a great team and you know, helping delegating details to to the people around me to my my sort of support staff um and the other thing i think we're going to use moving forward is we're going to use this virtual we got really good at virtual design i was talking about it in the breakout room we have like a phenomenal technique now and we had a lot of virtual clients before because we are doing a lot of vacation homes half our clients were working on their second and third home they don't live here full time but now we have like a rock star way of really managing people who live in other countries, who live in other parts of the United States. And um, that's something we're totally gonna use in the future. We've, that system is like rock solid now. So that's kind of cool. Heather, close yourself. Uh, like what Krista said, I was completely overworked and constantly on the go and nonstop like crazy. And it was a huge shock to me when I had to just like everything came to a halt. But it did make me realize and appreciate the the gift I got with spending more, you know, quality time with my family and being able to do things for myself um, that I never was able to do before because I always put everybody else first. So I think just moving forward. Um, I learned a lot about balance and the importance of of not putting like all your eggs in one basket and, and it's okay to not be the busiest person in the universe, but it's just more about quality versus, you know, craziness, I guess. So I think that's what I'm gonna stick with. 
and I, I think we have time for like one question. Oh, here we go. Nice. Yay! Look at that. Woo! Is everybody looking at those results? That's terrific. That's um, awesome. Yeah, I know there was. Um, that's that's really great to see. Uh, there's a smile on my face. I know there was one question in the chat from from Kirsten about the PPP loan. Um, if anyone has been able to get their forgiveness yet, and I I can answer. Um, I I um, for my husband's company, we were just invited yesterday through my bank to do it. And then for Krista Home, we have we've gotten the notice that you know one day they're going to invite us. Um, but we, we have not been invited yet. Um, so, um, you know, we're ready. We have, all, we, we have all the paperwork, everything's ready to go. So whenever they ask, they ask. Thank um, you. I feel yeah. better now because I'm still waiting for my link from the bank. So I just wanted yeah. to understand. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, and I know a friend of mine just submitted um, just the other day. Okay. So I think that everyone's just sort of waiting. Um, Thank you. Did anyone have any other general questions? I think we have we literally have two minutes. So I think we have time for one or two questions if anyone has. Oh, they're asking questions. Mm. Um, we also just put this up before everybody jumps off on just letting us know how how we did today collectively. So that's um, just we'd like your input. It's it's anonymous. We we love feedback. But keep going with your questions and before I close it up. There are any questions? Um, well, if nobody has questions, I, I would really let, like to thank our panelists, um, uh, Krista, who I work with and had to do it, um, but Amy and uh, and Heather, we really appreciate your participation and getting getting up and, and all prepared and make up so early in the morning. Um, and we, we do appreciate that and, and we really appreciate everyone here and uh, participating and, and being a part of this. I know, um, just personally, I enjoyed it immensely. Um, I, I always enjoy the, the TCI uh, programming and uh, you know, I definitely felt that I, that I learned a few things and, and, uh, and just seeing that last poll and seeing that everyone, that every last person on this call, their business is either picking up or going to be better next year. I, I got to tell you, if that's the only thing that I saw this entire time, that one little nugget is enough to just absolutely make my day. So, um, so that's great. So Lori, if you wanted to close out. I just wanted to thank you guys. I thought this was, I love the format. I love the interaction. I thought today's talk was great. And again, same with you. When I saw the poll in 2021, and and you're all you're you're all encouragement on how important it is to stay optimistic and stay positive. But I really appreciate you guys sharing your wisdom 